The rubber match of a three-game series between K-State and Oklahoma today from Twenton Family Stadium in the Little Apple. And what emotions will be on par for these two teams because it has been a highly emotional series in the Manhattan, Kansas. All right, so the Pepsi starting lineups for the Sooners. Skip Johnson sending out the same lineup he's had the last couple of days. Briley Ware, the Kansas State over the three-hole first-team all-Big 12 player. Coming in today after an 0-for-4 effort yesterday ending a long hitting streak. We'll see if he bounces back today. As for the Wildcats, defensively, again, the lineup the same for Pete Hughes as in yesterday's 5-2 win. Dylan Phillips moving from left field to first base due to injury to normal starting first baseman Terrence Sperlin. So Blake Burrell's second straight start out of the left field. Jackson Pasado a second straight start at second base as well. And on the mound for K-State is Jordan Wicks. The freshman sensation who has been the star pitcher for K-State all season long from Conway, Arkansas. Team best five wins, 2.52 ERA, which makes him one of the top seven in the Big 12 Conference. Back out on the hill, coming off a Big 12 Newcomer of the Week honor two weeks ago. He will face Muniz, Lindsley, and Ware to open up the ballgame with Bill McGuire calling the balls and strikes behind home plate today for this ballgame. Hope you enjoy it. Oklahoma won the opener 8-4 on Friday. K-State won yesterday 5-2. This has been a highly charged series with the two head coaches obviously with some history. Pete Hughes having served at Oklahoma for a long time as the head coach and now at K-State. So a lot of the players for the Sooners recruited or played for Pete Hughes. And with it you have seen a lot of people showing a lot of emotion on both sides of the diamond in what has been an entertaining series to watch. Hope you enjoyed here today. Sellout crowds the last two days. A lot chillier here today with the threat of rain, so it's kind of scared away perhaps the numbers that we saw the first two games of the series, but still a decent crowd that's still filing in as we are underway with Muniz leading things off. Two for nine in the series is Muniz so far for Oklahoma. Wick snibbling at that outside edge. Did not get the call from Bill McGuire. So far we've seen tight strike zones this weekend. Muni's fouling one off as the sun pokes its head back out. We'll see intermittent sunshine throughout the game here today. Again, rain in the forecast for later this afternoon and into tonight. Fly ball out to right field with a south wind blowing out towards left field today. Zach Kikoski will make the grab. Mike Clark alongside. What do you have for the Kansas Lottery keys to victory today? For Oklahoma, big hits. They got big hits Friday night, did not yesterday. And uh, they won and they lost in the two games. And then make Kansas State earn it. Kansas State took advantage of some walks, hit batters, Lack of execution by Oklahoma. And then for K-State, it is execution. Continue to get those bunts down, move runners, played aggressive, scored runs, and, and won the ball game uh, yesterday. And then strikes and defense, which was lacking Friday night. As you said, it's been the recipe really has been pretty simple for both teams. It, it, the ones that have done it have been able to come out of here with wins. The ones that haven't have seen the other side take advantage of the mistakes. It hasn't necessarily been beating yourself, but just you're setting things up for the other team to have big innings and to score runs and to win ball games. Thompson makes the play off the bat of Lindsley, two gone. Thompson's played pretty well at third base for the Wildcats here as he has seen his bat also improve. Yep. Well hit ball. Cam's really steadied things at third base. Uh, the move over there earlier in the season, uh, which was a defensive liability earlier, has turned into very, very consistent defense over there. Briley Ware out of Sedgwick, Kansas, Neosho County Community College for one season where he was the National Junior College Player of the Year, recruited by Pete Hughes to Oklahoma, now in his third and likely last season with the Sooners. Fly ball out towards right center. Wynn will push this towards Will Brennan. He'll make the grab. Jordan Wicks works a 1-2-3. Top of the first. We'll get our first look at freshman Ben Abram against the Wildcat hitters when we return.
The Pepsi starting lineup for Pete Hughes and the Wildcats today. Thompson, Brennan, Hughes, and Kikoska have had a tremendous weekend at the top of the order for the Wildcats. It's been a little hit or miss for the bottom half of the order, but K-State with a defensive-minded lineup with Casano and Burroughs trying to help them out at the 8-9 spots. Oklahoma defensively, Treadway can really run it down in center field. Ware and Zaragoza as good as it gets to the Big 12 along with McKenna along the infield. This is the top defense in the Big 12 with a 987 field percentage in conference play. On the mound, our first look at freshman Ben Abram, who was a Team Canada teammate of Griffin Hassel, K-State's Friday night starter. Ben Abram has been working mostly in the midweek this season for the Sooners, but now gets his first appearance in Big 12 play, getting his first weekend start here today against Kansas State. 6'7", 265 pounds from the Toronto area. A big lad up there for the start. He's going to sit in the upper 80s to low 90s with the fastball. And he'll go against Cam Thompson, Will Brennan, and Thomas Hughes. First pitch of the ball game to K-State. Thomas Hughes, or excuse me, Cam Thompson, a guy that's very aggressive early in the count. Takes a big cut, comes up empty. And strike one to Thompson. What a weekend Thompson has put together for the Wildcats. High fastball out of the zone. Thompson is 6 for 9 in this series with an OPS on base plus slugging of 1,778. High fastball is top towards third. Ware has a cannon and he unleashes it there to throw out Thompson. Well, out number one. You can really see the spin on that ball. Cam hit it off the end of the bat. That had two different directions. One of the things when you have spin, just like with a breaking pitch, the ball will spin the opposite direction, so every bounce it will spin a different direction. Where did a good job feeling it with his glove. Then it was just a matter of that arm getting it over the first base accurately. Will Brennan, now the batter for the Wildcats. Two for eight in this series. And Abram missing up in the early going against the Wildcat hitters. Brennan now at 304, three homers, 25 driven in. Two of Will's three homers have come here in the last seven to eight games. Ahead 2-0. and oh. We talked about it yesterday, but it seems like Brennan has really excelled since being moved to the number two spot in the order. The numbers back that up the last seven games, hitting 333. He has hit in four straight. Three extra base hits in the last seven games. 2-0 fastball to make it 2-1. and one. Ben Abram, just the eye test. Boy, he fits the part. Big right-hander out on the mound. 2-1, right into his mid, a line out. And Ben Abram has to catch his breath in addition to catching the baseball. It's a chuck and duck there. Let me tell you, that was as much survival as it was actually making the play. If he'd have been holding his glove down lower, that would have been a base hit. <laughs> that's, that's how quick that ball got there. Very lucky. It didn't hit any of that big target. Hit him right in the mitt. I think uh, the ball caught the glove. <laughs> Thomas Hughes takes strike one. Hughes three for five in this series. Three walks on base percentage. As you see there, nearly 370. It was Hughes who dropped a well-executed squeeze play in the game yesterday in the seventh inning that gave K-State two runs. Swings at the slider and comes up empty. One and two. May it be the, the, the shortest, at, or shortest ball hit with two RBIs in Kansas State baseball history. <laughs> Very true. I mean, ball traveled about 40 feet. Trying to protect, fouls this one away. 
Both bullpens today are in pretty good form, but with the two guys on the mound today, two freshman pitchers, both head coaches expecting those guys to go deep in the game. So you'll see all the stops pulled out today trying to get the win. Both sides recognize the importance of today. Oklahoma trying to stay on pace with the upper part of the division and the conference. Four teams in double figures in wins in the conference. Oklahoma sitting at seven, alone in fifth place. 2-2, two, two, top towards third. This will be a tough play. Ware with a bare hand. Throws him out at first. Briley Ware shows off his arm again with a stellar defensive play at third. And the suitors set down K-State in order. Kid that looks every bit the part of a major leaguer. K-State baseball is brought to you by K-State Global Campus. Earn a degree from Kansas State no matter where you live. K-State Global Campus, expanding campus to you. Pepsi, proud beverage sponsor of the Wildcats for more than 40 years. And by the Kansas Lottery, proud sponsor of K-State Athletics. Kansas State, no score with Oklahoma. Both pitchers locked in as we go to the second inning. Brian Smother and Mike Clark with you up here in the broadcast booth. Glad you could join us today. Second straight game here on ESPN3. An entertaining start. Really expecting a pitcher's duel again here today. Although I guess you never really know, but so far so good. Yeah, the batting averages of both teams very similar. They both try to do things. Maybe K-State more with the power. Oklahoma more with the bunt, but the first inning, if, you know, great defense, good pitching, and I think that's what we're going to see for, for nine innings. Whoever blinks first is going to probably get in trouble. So. Yep, and find themselves with the series lost. Of course, Kansas State has Jordan Wicks on the mound. Ben Abram has been the guy for Oklahoma. We're going to hear about him more later, but both coaches, head coach Pete Hughes and Skip Johnson, had kind of the same idea how to, about, to go about and getting a win today. For more on that, let's go to Anna Christensen, the third member of our crew. Thanks, Brian. That's right. Both head coaches have said this game is all about execution. OU's Skip Johnson says that his guys need to execute their game plan and make sure that they're playing to the ball, not their opponent. He also said that they need to stick to the basics and make sure that they get those right. Pete Hughes had similar thoughts, saying he tries to take it a game at a time, and the Cats need to play their game regardless of who's in the other dugout. Brian. All right. Thank you, Anna. Jordan Wicks sent for a first pitch that missed. Comes back and evens the count with a fastball blown past Justin Mitchell. And it's one and one. And a foul tip off the bat of Mitchell. Waving at the changeup and it is one and two. Changeup to right-handed batters will be the weapon for Jordan Wicks. A very good changeup. One of the best you'll see from a young arm. One, two, pitch. Weekly hit to second. Passano on the run. Makes the throw in time. And he appeared to be unfazed by the squirrely hop that came right before he got to the ball. A lot of pitches or a lot of hits right now off the end of the bat. And you can really see the, the, the way the ball travels. That ball kicked off to the, the uh, glove hand side of Passano, and he just stayed with it. Made a good throw. <laughs> Pitchers are doing a good job of locating and also changing speed. Uh, Wicks does a good job. He has a two-seam fastball, moves really well, but he also has a cutter that he'll try to throw back up on the outside corner, mix that in with his changeup, and uh, uh, those three pitches are, have been very successful for him. And He's in the strike zone getting ahead in the count. Like to see that. Defense likes to see that. Coaching staffs like to see that. At a Conway, Arkansas, where he was the number 12 recruit in the state of Arkansas, coming out as a senior, high school All-American. Just low to Hardman here to even the count at one. Pick K-State over Vanderbilt, Ole Miss, the home state Razorbacks, and again, the Wildcats, the benefactor. Of a young man that certainly will be in the conversation for Big 12 Pitcher of the Year, although it looks like Alec Manoa of West Virginia is starting to pull away in that conversation, but put himself in it with his performance at Texas when he was second in the league in ERA after that performance. Pitch 
fouled away by Hardman. At this point, you feel pretty good about K-State's chances of getting a one, two, maybe more players on that all-Big 12 freshman team. There's three freshman arms that have uh, really stood out this year and really coming on strong here late in the year. So, and in Hassel and Torres, those will be the two you're talking about. Both have appeared in this series. Six foot, 220 pounds, Jordan Wicks. I'm not sure if baseball has a newcomer of the year. Or they do. That type of thing. Kikoska has to be in the mix on that. Backhand by Hughes. Phillips helps him out on the other end. So far, so good for Wicks and the Cat defense. He's fastball on the outside part. Hardman tries to pull it. And rolls it over to the shortstop. Defense so far for Kansas State. And Oklahoma, both of them excellent. Connor McKenna, the batter for Oklahoma, who played for Buck Taylor at Palomar Junior College last year. Pitching coach of the Wildcats. So this is one of his former players. McKenna now the starting second baseman for the Suitors. Three for seven in the series is McKenna with an RBI. And ahead 2-0 and oh on Justin Wicks. Wicks just keeps hammering that outside corner but can't get the call. Three and one. Wicks is not a guy that walks very many. Only 15 walks this year in 61 and two-thirds. Made two good adjustments there with the fastball, getting it back over the plate. Umpire and the pitchers are still adjusting to whatever the strike zone is going to be, and you have an experienced umpire crew, so McGuire, once he gets locked in, will be pretty steady ball and strike. This was into the, with the win. At first, you thought with a launch angle, that might be trouble, but McKinnon not square it up. And a fly out to short left field ends the second. Kansas State and Oklahoma tied at zero as we head to the bottom of the second. That was yesterday's promotion here at the ballpark, those foam bat hats from the Ahern Fund. The gentleman right there, he understands baseball. You don't mess with a streak. And if the Cats won when you're wearing a foam bat hat on your head, then you, by goodness, wear that the next day because it might mean the Cats win again. As long as the streak is alive, you wear it. There's been some really raunchy uniforms worn game <laughs> after game after game by baseball players through the years on just about every team. Can't help but fall into a bit of that trap of the superstitions and ritualistic nature of the game just because of the monotony of so many of the same things every day. It can help you fall into that. Zach Koska, speaking of a guy that's Doing the same thing every day. Just keeps finding a way to get hits and RBIs. Leading the team in batting average, homers, and second the team in runs driven in is Kokoska. He'll pop one up left side. Plotting what is a gray sky. Briley Ware in front of the King State dugout will make the grab. There's a lot of high patch, patchy clouds today, which may hide the baseball a little bit as it goes up. King State has turned the lights on just in case, as it's been intermittent between cloudiness and sunlight. Sometimes a white baseball can get lost up against those white or grayish clouds. So, And if the, if, the pot, if the sun does pop out unexpectedly and you don't have your shades on, cause another problem. So, The wind today out of the southeast, it's kind of out of the right field corner blowing across the diamond at 15 miles an hour, occasionally in from right field. We've had three different wins over three different days. Ceballos so will test where again. Not a good idea. As he takes care of the Wildcats with a third straight out. Basically, other than the first baseman, everybody else can just go to the dugout because that's pretty much been, been his uh, defensive game right now. So. He 
do not want to try and go over that way unless it's with a bunt. It's where very tough customer at third base. Kansas native. Now Dylan Phillips out of Omaha, Nebraska. Freshman for K-State. 0 for 6, but has reached base a couple of times with a walk and a hit by pitch. Scored a run yesterday. He takes strike one on a pitch down and away. Season number for Phillips, who is playing first base for the second straight day with Sperlin on the men from a rolled ankle in Friday's game. One and one. Phillips, uh, a young man that picked K-State over Creighton in Iowa. Coming to the Wildcats as a high school All-American as well out of Creighton Prep. Trying to become the first base runner of this ball game. Neither side has been so far able to solve the freshman hurler on the hill. All right, Abrams, good fastball, been able to change speeds. Kind of mirrors of Wicks and and uh, and Abrams. They're doing about the same thing. One left-handed, one right-handed. Much like Griffin Hassel, the story on Abram, of course, is about him being able to handle just about anything with having thrown for Team Canada and a traveling team with Hassel that was in spring training going against some major league teams. So they've seen some of the top talent in baseball that there is. Lends one to feel a little bit less imposed or uh, maybe, you know, shaken by well, going up against the... If you faced Mike Trout, I mean, what do you, what, what's this? Or this Vladimir, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Then this team is a team that's played the Toronto Blue Jays a lot of time, the Team Canada. Yeah. So it's, uh, again, you're going against guys like that. It's a little different. Popped up. Again, Ware. Now Zaragoza, and it'll be Ware backing up. Ware has made the last four putouts, and he has made five of the six putouts in the game. No scores. We head to the top of the third inning. So far, both freshman pitchers have been very dominant for K State and Oklahoma. Brian Smolder, Mike Clark, Anna Christensen. Producer director Andy Leibsch and our entire crew with you here from Toynton Family Stadium. Bottom third of the order for the Sooners up to face left hander Jordan Wicks for the Wildcats. And if this is the first time you've watched K State and trying to figure out what this whole Pete Hughes and K State baseball mania has been about here, as the Wildcats have won nine of their last 13, a number of wins against ranked opponents, a large component of it has been the steadiness of the freshman pitchers, Griffin Hassel and Jordan Wicks. And I can remember all the way back in non-conference play, I know we've mentioned this before, but Craig Wilson, your former star, that was a Big 8 player of the year, All-American, Team USA guy, played in the major leagues for 10 years. He compared Jordan Wicks to Mark Burley of the Chicago White Sox, an all-star pitcher and longtime left-hander in the major leagues saying that that's who his motion or what the motion of Jordan Wicks, his style, his delivery reminded him of. That would be a good person to emulate, definitely. Zara goes to the shortstop for the Sooners will take strike one. You know, there's a lot of guys, and it's especially the college game, you just see wind-ups and different motions. They're just herky-jerky. They're all over there, and you kind of wonder about long-term the wear and tear that they could suffer on their body and arms. And watching Wicks, he's just got a so easy, clean delivery. And and the ball kind of explodes out of his hand. Uh, you know, got that good two-seam fastball that tails away from a right-hander. He's got a good slider, good cut fastball, changeup. Uh, he's been staying on the outside part of the plate more or less today quite a bit. But uh, that, he's, he's, you know, shows maturity beyond his years and with his motion shouldn't have arm problems uh, as he goes through uh, his career he's got more more you use your legs the more you use your body rather than your arm to generate velocity the better off you're going to be Sarah goes are trying to fight one off fouls it up the right side Wicks 
really grabbed the attention of the Big 12 with his performance at Texas a few weeks ago where he went nine innings and pitched a complete game shutout with six strikeouts against the Longhorns. It was the first ever shutout by K-State against Texas in the series history that dates back to the early 1900s. That time Jordan came in tight with a fastball, didn't get it in quite as much as he'd like to have, but got a foul ball. Zaragoza just continuing to battle, trying to run up the pitch count of Wicks. Shallow fly ball, and it will find its way in for a hit. Perfectly placed by Zaragoza. You could hear it off the sound that it didn't get it clean off the bat, and it ends up falling in. First hit for either side is a blue. A little breaking pitch that Zaragoza just blooped into uh, no man's land there, the triangle, and uh, first hit, first base runner of the ball game. Brady Harlan, who had been a hot hitter coming into Manhattan, two for six in the series, will hit now with a man on. Showing bunt, and Wicks will go to first. A lot of bunts in this series by both teams. Only five official sacrifice hits, but of the combined 36 hits, it feels like at least a third of them have been infield singles. That, and it, you know, it's just the execution of it, defensively and offensively, but... It's played a big role in the win for Oklahoma Friday night and the win yesterday for Kansas State. And it doesn't go down as a sacrifice bunt because sometimes it turns into a hit, sometimes it's a fielder's choice, but still doesn't get any outs. And it's a, you know, it's been a big weapon for both teams, and it's up to both teams to be able to execute defensively. As you said at the outset, who and just there again, whoever has executed has usually gone on to win. The ones that haven't have seen a loss. Swinging and a foul tip into the mitt by Harlan. We've seen squeeze plays. We've seen bunt, then pull the bat back, slap plays. We've seen show bunt on a pitch, then swing the next pitch. Not everything being pulled out by both teams in that regard. And a throw to first. This is not a running team in Oklahoma. They are not ones to put on the speed game. Zaragoza has four stolen bases on the year, one in this series. In fact, the only stolen base in the series for the Sooners. 1-1 one, one fouled away, so it looks like the bun is off now for Oklahoma. Oklahoma has grabbed the lead in both games of this series to this point. They led... In the Friday game, 4-1, to one, and then they led yesterday 1-0 before K-State rallied. But it's actually been the team that scored the first run, both games, that has gone on to lose. Strike three called in the inside corner. Harlan has a fastball underneath his hands, and he's the first strikeout victim. Great job. Four-seam fastball, kept it right on the out, uh, inside corner. And uh, just froze Harlan, looking for something away at that, uh, obviously. And Jordan Wicks executed the pitch perfectly. Outside corner missed to Treadway. Treadway, two for six in the series as well. A couple of RBIs. Both of those hits came in the Friday affair. He went hitless yesterday, but did drive in a run. Runner is going. The pitch was outside, and the tag well in time to get the runner, Zaragoza. Yeah, that was a hit and run that... Uh Treadway just was not able to make contact on. Zaragoza 
waited to make sure that there was no pickoff uh, play at first base, no pickoff move. And so he had a late jump and was easy. It was just a matter of whether Passano could get to second base in time to put the tag down. 13th runner thrown out this year by Ceballos, and that is tied for second in the Big 12. Pop up the shallow right will be taken care of by Zach Kokoska. And through three innings, Jordan Wicks has faced the minimum. Quick game so far, bottom of the third inning. Both pitchers have been dominant. King State getting their third bat. A third turn at the plate against starter Ben Abram. Is that our old Kenny Lanou out there on the outfield seating with the Sun Easton? How about that? Good to see Mr. Lanou here. That'd be a pretty good place to watch the ball game because you kind of got Brandeberry blocking the wind. That's right. And the sun and uh, look right over. Reminiscing a little bit of the old scoreboard down the right field line with yeah. people sitting out there on that. There you go. There he is. Always on his phone. Never once looking away from his phone. He's probably checking the golf scores there at the Big 12 golf tournament. Last I saw, K-State was in seventh place. They're done for the day, 274. He's got his master's hat on. Looking sharp. Easton, thankfully, wearing all the K-State stuff. Caleb Little Jim after the first pitch, able to hit that same spot that was found in the top half of the inning by Zaragoza. Little Jim has the first hit for K State. So yesterday's starting pitcher, the Oklahoma native, who got the win to tie Wicks for the team lead with five, has the first hit of the day for the Wildcats. Boy, he did a great job on the mound yesterday, holding down the Sooner offense. Just, just what the Cats needed. No doubt about it. Oklahoma native, you knew the Cats needed somebody to come up big, and boy, did he ever deliver for K-State. Jackson Passano, bunting, and bunts it to no man's land. Nobody covering first, and Kansas State will have another infield hit. Passano with hits and back-to-back -back at bats going back to yesterday. Yep. Execution, executing the bunt coverage. Did a good job pushing it past the pitcher. First baseman went after it. Ended up getting by everybody. I would suspect we'll see another sacrifice punt here. Blake Burrows, number nine man. And yes, bunting, foul. Trying to go to third base side, which would be the right play here with the right-hander on the mound. Ware trying to stay near the bag. Burroughs runs well, as you see, 167 average. He has played not a whole lot for K-State, but getting more time lately. Two for 12 on the season. This is second straight start, 22nd appearance. Time called as the Texas freshman backs out. 5'6", 170 pounds against 6'7", up on the mound. So <laughs> about a foot difference. Good down angle for the pitcher. And the bunt well placed. Wiley will have to hurry. He fumbles the baseball and everybody is safe. A rare misstep from a gold glove third baseman. I don't think he could have thrown him out anyway. Burroughs was way down the line. I was watching the, the Burroughs run, and I mean, where, where, where has a good arm, but he, I mean, I'm not sure that 100 mile an hour would have got him out at first base. That's a base hitter. What a great bunt. <laughs> And once again, in the series, you execute the bunt. You don't execute the bunt. Defense can come out and, and bite you. This is the opportunity Kansas State's been looking for. Bases loaded, top of the order. Here we go, Here we go. Using small ball. 
And now Cam Thompson, who homered yesterday, also had an infield single. And this is what the bunt creates, is uncertainty, if you're Oklahoma, of what exactly K-State's going to do. Swinging away is Thompson, and he'll foul one off. You know, in the position that in the position that the infield's in, a high hopper could be a base hit and drive in two. Where was Cam yesterday, that home run, majestic shot down the line that stayed fair. The bunt single, we just saw this from Pastor, the same idea, push it past the pitcher. And then Cam scored the second of these two runs on the squeeze play by Thomas Hughes. And you can see the emotion from K-State in that game yesterday. Trying to carry it over. Thompson trying to continue what has been a torrid weekend. Shot towards second. Could be two. This will get a run in. It is a double play, but the Wildcats score the game's first run. Oklahoma will take the defense, allow the run to score to get the two outs. Cats still have a runner at third base. Two outs looking for a two-out hit from Will Brennan. No RBI there for Thompson, but at least gets the ball in play. A run in for the Wildcats. We saw that in the game yesterday. Kokoska, in fact, did the same thing. Grounded into a double play with the bases loaded to get a run in. Here's Will Brennan, who squared one up, but right at the pitcher his last time at the plate. That was caught by Abram. And swings through a high fastball. A lot of room up the middle if you can get that ball by the pitcher to drive the run home. Breaking ball nearly hit him. Second time through here for Abram. Thompson was the first to go in through the second time through the order. One, one, rocketed, backhanded by Hardman. He'll take it to the bag himself and beat Brennan for the final out. Big time Oklahoma pitching to get out of that jam. They've shown that a couple of times in the series. King State gets the bases loaded, but only gets one run out of it with nobody out. K-State with a 1-0 lead over Oklahoma. A double play turned by the Suitors their third of the series. But over 40 now in the year by Oklahoma. And that has given them a chance to avoid a big inning. But it has given Jordan Wicks a 1-0 lead as he starts the fourth but getting his second time through the order of Oklahoma. Wicks has faced the minimum through this point. On the top of the order due up, Muniz gets his second look at the left-hander. Fly out to right for Muniz. And he starts behind 0-1. Good two-seam fastball, keeping the ball down in the zone. Fouled away, Muniz down on a heap. He caught his own foot with that. Good slider working back into him. Right off the big toe. Muniz. The in step there. That's not going to feel good. Nothing, part, any part of that would feel good. Nope. Hurts worse on a cold day. It's not, a, not really a cold day today, but it is brisk. I mean, if you're, the wind at 15 miles an hour on a Day where the temperatures are not expected to get over 62. It's going to be cold. Unis will strike out half heartedly, swinging at that last pitch. Two strikeouts now for Wicks. <laughs> Gave him a tempting fastball up and out of the zone. And Unis maybe wasn't quite as focused as he needed to be after following that off of his toe. Lindsley grounded out the third in his first at bat. He's been the leading hitter this weekend for Oklahoma. Four for ten.
One RBI came in the bowl game yesterday. Good slider. Had him in a fastball count, came with the slider and swung right over it. Popped up foul out of play. One and two. Got him out in front of it again. Lindsley, the catcher for the Sooners. Hitting just 260, though, in conference play. How's that one off his yes. own foot? Tough inning for Sooners hitters. Yeah, and he's got the protective gear down on that lead leg. I think he got the inside part. Yes, that shin guard's more on the outer half. He still may have caught just the side of it. It's enough to have him pause for a moment. Audible bench and all Big 12 catcher a season ago for the Sooners. Strikes out. And Wicks now has back-to-back -back strikeouts in three of the last four. Went to the fastball away. Did a good job. That was actually a cutter. Thing. Started on the outside part of the plate and just cut away into the other batter's box. So not much of the changeup today from Wicks. As Bradley Ware stands in, as I say that. There you go. <laughs> First pitch to Ware is a changeup. Must have been on a Buck's chart. We better throw a changeup here. Pretty. No. Let's show it. And the reputation of Wicks, of course, is the changeup. First and foremost. Wear down 0 and 2. See more and more young pitchers coming into the college ranks with a change up fastball combo and not yet having the development of a curveball or a slider. You know, that's not bad because the longer you wait, as long as you know how to throw it properly, the breaking pitch won't hurt your arm. The problem is, is a lot of people out there don't know how to teach to throw the breaking pitch properly. One, two, pitch out to center. Not well hit. Will Brennan takes care of it in center field. Jordan Wicks continues to mow down Oklahoma. Two strikeouts in this inning for Wicks as he's faced the minimum through four. Kansas State with a 1-0 lead over Oklahoma as we head to the bottom of the fourth. While we're taking a tour through K-State employees working today, there's Preston Kerner from our own K-State HDTV staff. Preston out there shooting some glamour shots today for K-State baseball. Hopefully they're in focus. We'll assume that they are. Glamour shots? Yeah. Okay. Not of himself. No, 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 no. I just, I, with baseball and glamour, they're, they're He's trying to make it look as glamorous as possible. Well, that, I can understand that. This is a glamorous shot right here. This, yeah. Uh, <laughs> over at this side. <laughs> Thomas Hughes to lead things off here in the fourth. Hughes, Kakaska, Ceballos. And Hughes, that sweeping slider, swings and misses. Thomas Hughes, three for six of the series, and his overall batting average, if there's ever a, a reason to thumb the nose at metrics, the pro, traditionalist metrics of batting average, homers, RBIs, that seem to be down. Thomas Hughes would be the perfect example of that. That's, uh, that's a strike. This is going to be a quick game. No doubt for both teams. <laughs> yeah. Hughes in the last 26 games has an on-base percentage of 400, but a batting average of 250. A 400 on-base percentage is no fluke, my friends. I mean, the, with baseball, there's so many different ways you can be successful. And his way of being successful is a combination of walks, takes a lot of pitches, works pitch count, 
Squeeze bunt, two RBIs, sacrifice bunt, move a runner, ground ball to the right side, get a run home. Strike three call to the outside corner. And Hughes strikes out. Strike zone has expanded a little bit there for Hughes and that at bat. I always <laughs> ask guys, you know, if that's a strike on a slider to a, with a right-handed pitcher, then why is that not a strike on a fastball with left-hander that's tailing in the same position? And we saw the last two half innings that situation where Wicks wasn't getting that outside corner two innings ago on basically the same location. And it's fun. umpires have their little quirks also. Yep. There's yep. certain umpires that have trouble calling strikes or getting the outside corner right with a left-handed hitter, and they're right on with the right-handed hitter. And it's just part of the beauty of the game that can be very frustrating sometimes. One and two. Good change up. Now both these freshman pitchers look pretty polished for first year in Division I baseball. Kakaska trying to protect that bottom part of the zone, fouls it away. Two for seven series weekend for Kakaska coming in. Now two for eight. But one of those hits a home run. Towering shot hit on Friday night. Just a big time blast late in the game. And he'll rope one here to right, right field. That'll fall in for a hit. Harlan thought about coming in, maybe diving, but discretion the better part of Valor lets it fall in. Fastball. That Abram left over the middle of the plate. Kakaska was all over it. Good job of hitting. He's been a great addition to this lineup. Just consistent quality at bats. I think you said it well earlier. He will be in the conversation for Big 12 Newcomer of the Year. Chris Ceballos, also a first-year player for the Wildcats, junior college transfer, who has made an impact both defensively and offensively. Ceballos having thrown out a runner today. Time for second in the league in that department. Now up there with Kakaska at first, and Zach is a threat to run. There he goes. Bunt was being shown by Ceballos. He takes the bunt off, and the ball pops out of the middle of Lindsley. He had a pass ball here yesterday. I think he may have just gotten another. That was pretty similar to a ball that got by him. I think it was Friday night where it just glanced off the top of his glove. That's a pass ball all the way. Just not concentrating. Distracted a little bit by the bunt being out there in front. But well, I think it may actually go in as a stolen base as Kokoska was off and running before the ball got away from that, Lindsley. Yeah. So... Lindsley saved from having the pass ball. And Ceballos puts one in the center field. Kakaska rounds third. He's chugging home. The throw is cut off, and K-State up 2-0. Ceballos has his first hit of the series, but the RBI leader drives in his 30th. Fastball inside. He was able to fight it off up the middle. Good base hit. Kakaska got a great jump, knew where the center fielder was, read it perfectly, and was able to come in and score the run, even though it was kind of a weekly hit, base hit. That was great base running by Zach. Dylan Phillips popped out the third, his first time up. Fouls one back to the screen. If anything, the ball not being hit sharply probably helped out K-State yeah. as it didn't roll quickly to tread away in center. Well, I was watching. You could see Kakaska, his jump that he got, and as soon as he saw that ball clear the pitcher, he was off, and, and uh, that was a good alert and aggressive base running, which Kansas State's shown all year. 
A lot of the base runners there at Kansas State would have taken off on that ball in the dirt. When they see the catcher go down to his knees on a block, the runner at first base, if you're a fast runner, they'll take off because they know that ball's going to bounce around on this turf. With Ceballos, we're going to stay a little closer to the base. Yeah, probably not. The one guy that probably is not given the green light to run as much. There was a game in the TCU finale, as a matter of fact, last Sunday, uh, Saturday when K-State won 11-10. Ceballos had three hits in the contest, a single, a double, and a homer. And we joked uh, after the game, Coach Hughes, about with Ceballos about potentially getting a triple for the cycle. And, and Coach Hughes says... I can guarantee you there would be no triples being given a get a, <laughs> achieved by Chris Ceballos. Well, you can't say no because there is the angle there at the it's true. right you never field know. that could, you know, well, take it off the, off the side. But it would have to be something fluky like that. The beauty of Coach Hughes, if you've never met him, is that he would tell – he was – quick to tell Chris that he was to be the same message he would give to anybody else that asked the question. The players love the ribbing, the brutal honesty from Pete Hughes at times. He just has that knack of making everybody laugh when he's around them and he can see how he has quickly endeared himself to this team and to the Wildcat fans. Well, the staff's done a great job of getting the players to buy into the win at all costs play aggressive, don't give in type of mentality. And they, they, they do that. The, the players understand the coaching staff and the coaching staff understands. And when you have that, that the players, and when you have that, you've got to trust there that you can rib, you can joke, you can uh, poke fun of somebody when, when the, you know, something isn't quite <laughs> goes quite the way you'd like it to, or they'd like it to. So. Uh, trust, an important word, no doubt, that has seemingly been there from the get-go. Devlin Phillips ahead on the count. Abram a couple throws to first. There is activity now in the Sooner bullpen. As Jarrett Godman has jumped up to start throwing. He is a freshman from Las Vegas. Trying to get loose. Two-way player that can also play in the infield. Strike fastball to Phillips, two and two. Not so sure he wasn't taking there, it looked like. We'll take a look at his wristband that has the checkerboard grid of all the plays for K-State. And a throw over to check on Ceballos. And as we mentioned, Ceballos really zero chance to run. This is more of just wasting time. Oklahoma trying to get Godman more opportunities to warm up in the pen. If Oklahoma believes Abram is laboring. 2-2. Two -two. Phillips ropes it down the right field line, but it will be onto the patio and down by the Willie's fun zone. That was a changeup that was up. Phillips just could not wait any longer and uh, just pulled it down the line. Phillips does have power. He has shown that in his freshman campaign with four home runs, hitting one onto the roof of Brandeberry earlier this year. In non-conference play, that's the indoor complex, the giant baseball indoor complex behind right field. 2-2, two -two grounded. Hardman with the spearing of it before it got the right field, and the attempt to turn two goes into the dugout, and that'll get Phillips to second. A little bit unlucky there for the Sooners. Turning two would have been difficult, but your hope would be that even on the return throw that it could be knocked down enough to keep Phillips at first. Instead, it goes into the dugout. And a runner in scoring position now from K-State as Abram just couldn't quite make the play. That's the most difficult play, uh, double play, ground ball to first base and have, to have the pitcher run over. And it's awkward. They're not used to the footwork that goes on there. And in this situation... Pitcher set up, Abram set up his feet, locked in, and the throw was off to the side, and he wasn't able to make the adjustment to stop it. Cato Little Jim had the first of five hits today for the Wildcats with a single in the third. He scored the first run. 
And a wild pitch from Abram will send Phillips over to third. This is a lot of the markings of yesterday when Oklahoma was the one creating some mistakes and allowing K-State some opportunities. <laughs> yeah, that just spiked that slider. I mean, that wasn't just away. That was way away and short. So, a Little chance for Lindsley Lair. I, I wouldn't be surprised to sit on a fastball here this pitch because break now they're going to come in and make a pitching change right now. Yep, I think Skip Johnson sensed the same thing. That Abram had suddenly lost command of the secondary stuff, and with only the fastball available, too many chances of things going wrong. So Abram will not make it out of the fourth. And Jarrett Godman coming in for Oklahoma. More on Godman when we come back. A 2-0 lead for the Wildcats as we head to the top of the sixth inning. Brian Smolder, Mike Clark, Anna Christensen with you here from Toynton Family Stadium. And President Richard Myers, the general, is here today from Kansas State University, former Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman. Saw so President Myers at the dedication of the Ernie Barrett uh, media room at the SAE house yesterday afternoon and gave a nice talk about Ernie and all that he means to Kansas State. And it's quite a ceremony. You know, the SAE house very proud that Ernie is a brother. Or I'm not sure what the terminology is. A member. Fraternity member, fraternity, fraternity brother, brother sure, I guess, yeah. huh? Hello? Ernie and Bonnie here at the ballpark today. So they were here yesterday, and they're here today again, sitting over in the suite. First Big fans. Strike. Big fans. So in addition to Preston Kerner, we have Richard Myers here in attendance today. So royalty truly at the ballpark this afternoon. Fouled away. Oklahoma trying to find something to break up Jordan Wicks' rhythm right now. Wicks has faced the minimum. He's kept his pitch count pretty low. He has four strikeouts all here in the last three innings. And he is finishing the second time through the order, and Oklahoma has not squared up many, if any, balls against the freshman lefty. 1-2 jammed out towards right center. Could Zaragoza find the same spot? He does. Second straight time, Zaragoza has found that sweet spot in between center, right field, and second base. He has both hits for the suitors and is on to lead off the sixth. Cats may want to do a shift over in that area. That, uh, got, saw it off, but uh, with the aluminum bat, was able to get it out. The golden triangle there, right center field. and Good at bat. OU has the leadoff batter on here in the sixth. Harlan swinging, not bunting, and he fouls it back. Harlan showed bunt in this same situation in the third, then started swinging away. He ended up striking out on a fastball under his hands. Throw over to check on Zaragoza, who was thrown out. Yeah, a batter later on a failed hit and run. Buried at the plate. One and one. Now, if you're in Oklahoma, the one positive here would be that Wicks hasn't had to go from the stretch very often in this ballgame. Just two batters. So your hope is that by having him go for the stretch now in the sixth, that may change him up enough with a distraction to the guy at first base that perhaps he'll make a mistake and the Sooner offense can start getting the carousel started. Sarah goes a close to the bag at first. Things have slowed down this half inning with the base runner and 
see if they can, uh, Wicks can make a quality pitch here. Harlan ahead two and one. Normally a fastball count. Let's see what Wicks dials up. High fastball. It went up top. After all the soft stuff, that fastball looked nice and big. The problem was it was above his hands, and Harlan wasn't able to catch up. The change up away, it looked like. 3-2, see if Zaragoza will take off on the pitch. Try to stay out of the double play. He does not, and it's foul tipped into the mid of Ceballos. Harlan strikes out. <laughs> Number five for Jordan Wicks. Wicks came back, got two fastball swing and misses. When he got behind in the count, put Harlan away. Tanner Treadaway flat out to center back in the third inning. And it was at his bat and in his at bat. Zaragoza was thrown out trying to swipe second, but they failed hit and run. And the Wildcats sensing that Kings Oklahoma tried that again. Throw over just to keep him close. Too low to tread away. Ball one. Too low. Falling behind here from the stretch position, the last two hitters needing to come back. Trust his stuff, get it back in the zone. Out of way. Try to way. But there's two hits in the game. Back on Friday night, really had continued what had been a torrid stretch for him. He had a couple of hits in the game, two doubles down at Wichita State. So from the number nine spot, really seemed to be catching fire. But then yesterday, 0 for 2. And so far today, it does not seem to have had a good read on Wicks. A chopper third base side. This is back in the hole at short. There will be no play for K-State defensively. Uh. The good news for the Cats is that bouncing ball wasn't down the third baseline because that would have gotten over Cam Thompson and gone down into the corner for probably an extra base hit. Again, the turf here at Kansas State, new turf, and it is very bouncy. And you pound something into the ground, then two, three feet of home plate, and it's going to have a big hop and going to be tough to throw anybody out. Another infield hit. Sooners finally threatening. Offense starting to get going. Back to the third time through now. Muniz, top of the order. A walk or a strikeout and a flyout against Wicks, and he fans at a changeup. First time today, the Sooners have not gone in order, and the first time they've had a runner at second base. Tying runs on for Oklahoma, so is Wicks as good as he's been? This is just a two-run lead. Popped up. Very shallow center field. Hughes is out with his back to the infield. He'll make the grab. It's one of those really tough plays. If it stays in the infield, it's going to be an infield fly. But the fact that it didn't, it drifted out, and the wind's blowing out that direction, that was a great play by Thomas Hughes. 
Two outs, runners held. Now Lindsley, leading hitter in this series for Oklahoma. Ground out strikeout against Wicks for the left-handed bat in Brady Lindsley. Getting a good look at Hughes, the former Sooner. What a weekend he's had. First pitch strike. Great slider. And Wicks appears to have all three pitches working today in the zone. So Wicks shake off a sign there. More on that in a minute. Buck Taylor, I asked him about that. Pitching coach for K-State. You know, some pitching coaches, they want you to pitch exactly what's called every time from the bench. So I'm going to miss 0-2. But well, Buck Taylor, if you he's a very easygoing gentleman, and he says, I have no problem with a pitcher shaking this off. If he feels like he's got a better pitch or he feels more confident in a pitch, I'd rather have him go to that than stick with what I'm calling. There's a look at Coach Taylor. Looking for Wicks to finish off this inning. With a high fastball, Lindsley wanted no part of that. It's been a pattern for him. It gets strike one, strike two with soft stuff, slider, changeup. Go for the high fastball. He's gotten a couple of swings and misses for strikeouts. Came back with it again. Lindsley did not offer. Two, two, skied out to right. And will carry over towards center. And Will Brennan will make the grab for the final out. Jordan Wicks in his first real jam of the day survives. K-State fans young and old taking care of this weekend series and watching this Wildcat bunch try to take a series again from Oklahoma. Looking to win their first series since 2013. I'm not sure if that's brother on brother crime or brother on brother love that's being shown right there. God, is is this a plug for Avengers Endgame, by the way, with Captain be. America there? <laughs> is this a plug right here? For, uh, I don't know if we're sponsored by Marvel or not, but we just gave him a free shout-out. Will Brennan, Thomas Hughes, Zach Kakoska here in the sixth. To face Godman, second pitcher of the day for Oklahoma. Got the Cats in order in the fifth. Center's hoping for another zero. Brennan able to pump one into right center field. Treadaway will cut that off, so Will is held to a single. Good efforts by Treadaway. But Brennan has hit number six for K-State. Got a change up. He just stayed back enough on it to serve it right up the middle. Base hit. Cats have leadoff batter on. See if they play a little short. Ball here with the bunt or hit and run. A lot of options for K-State. Thomas Hughes 0 for 2. Victim of a very fine defensive play of Briley Ware back in the first. Struck out looking in the fourth on a couple of pitches that may have been normally on the outside part of the zone today for Bill McGuire. Will Brennan is the stolen base, base leader for K-State, so the suitors will play heavy attention, you would think, to him. He shows bunt, takes a strike. Brennan has nine stolen bases for the Wildcats this year. Last year, he stole 19 bases for K-State in 23 attempts. Draws the throw. Now, Godman was pretty quick to home plate on the first pitch. See how fast he is here. Next couple of pitchers 
be a big determining factor on what Kansas State does. And a turn and a throw. Shane Conlon, who's the first base coach for K-State, if you can see in his hand, he's got a stopwatch. And he is timing the delivery to home plate. And Oklahoma may have pitched out there. Maybe unintentional and not as uh, direct, but Lindsley came out of his crouch pretty quick. Yeah. So the cat and mouse game really in full force right now. As King State senses as you get to the later parts of this game, the importance of another run or two with Wicks pitching so well. Regardless of how long he can go in the game, you'd feel a lot better if you're the Wildcats of adding one or two or more runs and Oklahoma trying to keep it where it's at. Runner breaks. The ball was outside again. It looked like Oklahoma pitching out, and Hughes spoils it by fouling it away. It's a good job by Thomas. Oklahoma sensing that there may be running. Went outside. You can see Lindsley jump out to the outside. It wasn't necessarily a pitch out. They were just going to go to the outside so that he had a good pitch to to hit a bad pitch to bunt, or a bad pitch to hit, bad pitch to to uh, to bunt, but also a good pitch to throw if it was a, a hit and run type situation. Breaking ball, and Hughes does well to foul it back. And by timing the pitcher from the set position, once he Mike's his move to pitch a ball to home plate. The stopwatch starts. When he hits the glove, it stops. And if you're a 1, 1.1, 1.2, very difficult to run on. Once you get up around 1.5, a lot easier to run on. Hughes will strike out on a high fastball, one out. <laughs> fastball out of the zone. Thomas would like to have that one back. <laughs> Zach Kakaska, one for two with a single and a run scored. Stole a base back in the fourth. He'll hit with Brennan at first and one out. Another pitch out. Oklahoma convinced that Brennan is going to be on the run. Big hole on that right side right now, though, for Kakaska to his pole side with Brennan still at first. A little harder for the catcher to throw also with their left-handed batter in the batter's box. He's on his arm side. That's a good point, especially with Kakaska because Zach finishes out over the plate. His just natural swing plane. His step carries him out towards home plate over the front line of that batter's box. So far, though, Godman has come nowhere close to the strike zone with two pitches. Work, Zach's worked the count to where he should get a pretty good pitch to hit right here. Whether Brennan's running or not, he should have a pitch that's going to be in a little bit. Oh, there the ball gets away. Spiked at first base. Will round second. Thinks about going to third. Now gets hung up between second and third, and he'll be in the rundown. Trying to get around the runner at third, he will not. 
So what looked at first to be a big time positive for K-State ends up being an unfortunate mistake. Yeah, made a big turn there at second base. And it looked like he slipped or Spike got caught. I'm not exactly what happened and wasn't able to get back to the base when uh, OU threw to second base. So an E1 allowing Brennan to get to second, but then he is out in the run down after for the second out of the inning. Now the base is empty, but a 3-0 count on Kikoska. What may have been a bigger inning. Especially now with a walk to Kikoska. His two outs runner at first. And you still got a good base runner there at first base. Two outs. Obviously, it's affected OU's, the way they've pitched the batters with speed on the bases. So we'll see if Oklahoma makes a mistake, see what if Kansas State takes off with Kokoska. Not running, and Ceballos, the huge cut, followed through, and his bat caught Lindsley, but did not catch the baseball. Strike one. Got a slider on the first pitch when he was looking for a fastball. There is activity behind Godman in the Sooner bullpen now. Time called by Ceballos and granted before the pitch was delivered. There are a couple of bullets in the gun, so to speak, as you see Bill McGuire, who gave the time call to Ceballos. Notably, their closer, and Jason Ruffcorn, the Texas A&M transfer. Legend Smith is the guy on the left, the left-hander. Ceballos swings and misses here, 0-2. Didn't see who the righty was. Zach Matthews and Jason Ruffcorn, the two other guys that could throw. There's it is Matthews that's on the left side of your screen. Looks to be ready. Legend Smith threw in the game on Friday and warmed up here yesterday, but didn't throw. So Bios has had a good game, one for two with an RBI single. Also threw out a runner trying to steal. What about him from Anna Christensen earlier? Now trying to pick up the Cats with a two-out base hit, keep the sixth inning going. So Bios has hit well over 300 with men on base this year, and big reason why he has 30 RBIs in 44 games, leading K-State. Oklahoma's been getting Ceballos out with the breaking pitch. Might be a good time to take off right here, thinking a breaking pitch is coming. It's well outside, and it is another breaking pitch that gets Ceballos. He strikes out, <laughs> inning ends. Wildcats started well, but unfortunately couldn't get anybody in. One hit a walk, no error, or one error. Man left. Two nothing Wildcats on getaway day. The only Big 12 series that's featuring a rubber match today. Everybody else in the conference going for sweeps. K State and Oklahoma, the winner today, takes the series as the Wildcats try to find a way to get a win. Looking elsewhere in the Big 12, Baylor now up 6 0 on TCU in the fourth inning. So the Bears looking for a sweep today. Texas looking to avoid a sweep up 10-2 in West Virginia. Looks like they'll pick up a win to move out of last place. And Oklahoma State, Texas Tech scoreless as they play in the bottom of the second. Seven teams ranked in receiving votes in the top 25 in the Big 12, America's number two RPI conference. Riley Ware to lead it off against Wicks in the seventh. See the pitch count for Wicks, pretty good shape. A guy that's been over the century mark quite a bit this year for the Wildcats. Had one extra day of rest after the Easter weekend series last weekend. Throwing on Saturday last weekend. Looking to get a 
fastball over. 2-1 and one to Ware. 0 for 2 today with a couple of flyouts to center for Ware, who's 1 for, one for 8 on the weekend, but has played superb defense at third base. Off the end of the bat here to left. Playable for Burroughs. He'll make the grab. First out of the seventh. Jordan's been able to come back after getting behind in the count here. Last <laughs> inning and a third. Made good pitches. Took a little bit off of that and got Ware out on front on the or and off the end of the bat to where wasn't able to square it up and pretty routine fly ball to left field. Starts behind Justin Mitchell for ball one. Designated hitter for the Sooners. One and one. Ground ball towards third. Thompson. Throw a little offline, but Phillips does well to go over the base to the other side to make the receive. Two outs. Now batting first baseman, Tyler. Little cutter. Got Mitchell to roll over on it to third base. Cats played airless baseball so far. Doing a good job behind Jordan. Tyler Hardman 0 for 2. Ground out and a fly out. Middle third of the order has really struggled. Really top six hitters in the lineup have struggled against Wicks. First pitch will miss. It's the bottom of the order that's provided all three hits today for the Sooners. off himself one and one good change up a lot more of the change up here second third time through for Wicks <laughs> try and pinch yourself and remind yourself that he's just a freshman first year in the league doing all this stuff and a line shot over the head of Hughes in the left field for a base hit so Hardman will pick up his second hit of the series and a two-out runner for the Sooners. That was a great job of hitting. That was a slider that just right down at, right at his ankles, and he was able to square it up and lift it up over Thomas Hughes at shortstop for a base hit. Connor McKenna, 0 for 2. In the bowl game, struck out his last time up. During the century mark in pitches. Wicks trying to finish off this inning with another zero. Oh and two. On the sacrifice bunt that occurred yesterday by K-State that scored two runs, when the dugout spilled out and celebrated, if you go back and look at that highlight, one of the first guys that's out of the dugout, bouncing up and down and chest bumping everyone, is Jordan Wicks, who had the chart in his hand while he's doing it, charting the game for today's start. Well, he would, he's at the... Closest to getting out of the gate, first of all, he's standing there with the coaches there in the front of the dugout. So he'd, he'd, he'd be one of the first ones to get out there, but I don't know about chest bumping and all that other stuff. When you're the, the pitcher the next, the, the next day, you don't want to injure yourself. He is an emotional guy that keeps it very well camouflaged when he's pitching. One, two, fly ball to right. Kakaska will make the grab. Jordan Wicks makes seven innings of shutout baseball look easy on a Sunday. K-State baseball is brought to you by K-State Global Campus. Earn a degree from Kansas State no matter where you live. K-State Global Campus, expanding campus to you. Pepsi. 
proud beverage sponsor of the Wildcats for more than 40 years. And by the Kansas Lottery. Dream bigger with the Kansas Lottery. Some of the scenic sights here in the Little Apple, the Flint Hills. Kansas State with a 2-0 lead over Oklahoma as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Brian Smolder, Mike Clark back with you here in the broadcast booth as Kansas State tries to finish off this series with a win. Bottom of the seventh coming up. Oklahoma still has a lot of weapons out of that bullpen. Offensively, they got to get something going, but more importantly, their bullpen has given them a chance for Oklahoma. It's still just a two-run game. It is. Uh, Wicks has thrown tremendous, only bent at one high uh, uh, energy inning that he really had to struggle a little bit. But just been outstanding. K State's been very opportunistic in, in in scoring the two runs. Took advantage of a breakdown and bunt defense, and and it's just been a great ball game. Kind of the game we thought it might be when you have two good freshman pitchers going after each other, two good defenses, and it's been a fun game to watch. Last two innings going to be interesting. Yes, they are, and we'll see a new pitcher out for Oklahoma as they turn to Zach Matthews, sophomore out of Wellston, Oklahoma. ERA of an even four, 19th appearance on the season. Matthews, an ERA of just under five in Big 12 play, but walks to strikeout ratio. As you can see, they're very good. 18 innings, 23 strikeouts, only four walks for the sophomore righty. And he'll be on the hill now to face Kansas State's Phillips, Little Jim, and Passano. That's the six, seven, eight hitters. A lefty, two righties for K-State here in the home half of the seventh. The Wildcats have scored in the later innings, the last three innings of the ball game. They have scored a combined 16 runs in the last three innings of their last three home games. Phillips after the first pitch fouls it off for strike one. That's the Sunday or Saturday TCU finale, the Friday night game. And the game here yesterday, 16 runs in those nine innings, the last three at-bats of the last three home games. I think it shows the attitude of the kids and the coaching staff, but what they've been able to instill in the players. They don't give up. doesn't matter what the score is. And saw that last Sunday against TCU, but also saw it in the game that the Cats lost Friday night where they came back and, and got four runs on the board, lost eight to four. Off the end of the bat by Phillips, out to center field. And Treadaway with the sunglasses on will make the grab for out number one. Jared Godman went two and a third innings, facing eight, allowing just one hit, striking out three. Now Matthews, and you would figure Roughcorn's behind him as insurance should Oklahoma be able to get the lead. Caleb Little Jim has one of the six hits today for K-State. After the first pitch, he'll hit in the air to right. And Harlan will make the grab. So just a couple of pitches, and Matthews has two outs. Passano may uh, take a pitch or two, try to give Jordan Wicks a little more time on the bench to catch his breath. Wicks right at 100 pitches through seven innings, and I think it would be hard-pressed to imagine him coming out of the game at this point. Sinners have left three on the last two innings against him, but he still has not allowed a run. That all said, Passano after the first pitch fouls it back. That may be some of the inexperience of a, a young player. Oh, nice catch by a young man here in the crowd today. <laughs> Off the bounce. It's my baseball. <laughs> Great that the fans get to keep the baseballs and take them home. Good souvenirs. Chopper left side will be foul. There was a time, right? There was no, a time. We had the balls numbered <laughs> when I coached. <laughs> Half of them, batting practice was taped balls. <laughs> We've reminisced about this before, but I, I remember the first year that it was it, it was a huge deal here at K-State that suddenly the foul balls, you could actually keep them. 
the fans could keep the foul balls. That was a big hurdle to be cleared. Well, it's college baseball has come a long way. The sport in general, but also here at K-State. It was really tough for the players because it was a freshman that had to go out and take the ball That's away right. from, from little kids That's who'd, right. run, who'd run down the ball. No upperclassman wants that job. Hey, uh, freshman, hey, Rook, <laughs> go up there and be the bad guy. Well, different ballparks had different things. I mean, they'd give you a nickel or have different things to reward you. Snow cones was the best, though, because <laughs> you'd see some guy that was late hitting foul balls down the left field line, and he gets in the on-deck circle, and you see the kids running down the left field line <laughs> and getting ready for snow cones. Pasado will strike out. An impressive first outing for Matthews. Straight gasoline on that last pitch. And we're still 2-0 after 7. Jordan Wicks with a 2-0 advantage as he heads to the 8th inning. 100 pitches for Wicks. As fearless and as much of a competitor as he is, you know he wants to go and get a, try and get another complete game, but... Wildcats obviously mindful of his future, not just for his career, but also this season. And having already thrown 129 pitches in a game earlier this season, the Cats will probably be very cautious with Wicks as he works to the bottom third of the order in the eighth. Normally that's the soft spot of a lineup, but today that's been the one that's given Wicks trouble. Zaragoza notably, he leads off the frame. He has two hits and two tries against Wicks. Zach, Zach Kakoska, the right fielder, has gone over. <laughs> he slid, yeah. slid over in that, that position a little bit closer, a little bit shallower. He called it. He said K-State might want to shade into that spot after two little dunkers out in that right center area. You can see Kakoska playing much shallower in right field and shaded more towards right center. Two and one. There is activity behind Wicks in the Wildcat bullpen. A couple of right-handers up and warming. That is Zubrot on the right, or on the left, I should say, and Stratman on the right. High fastball, and Zaragoza lays off. Zubrot pitched in the game in Friday's contest. Stratman has warmed up both days, but has not thrown as of yet. And ball four. First walk of the game issued by Jordan Wicks. And the leadoff man on for Oklahoma for the second time in three innings. And we'll have a pinch hitter for Brady Harlan. So Harlan will be called back and a pinch hitter, the first of the series for Oklahoma, as Mylon Wallop, a true freshman from Kerrville, Texas. Will make his first appearance in 13 games. And the true freshman who is just 10 for 54 in the year, though for a 185 average, will pinch hit here. Doubt if they're going to bunt in this situation. You have to respect that, but we're getting late in the ball game. Harlan struck out twice against Wicks to this point. It didn't look exceptionally good in either at bat, so that may be part of the thinking here. Lefty-lefty matchup, get him out and have Walla the right-hander. First pinch hit appearance this year for Walla. Low pitch that has been, at times a strike, ruled down. Some chatter coming from not just the fans, but from the King State dugout as well. Pass called blown past Walla. And it's one and two. Walla, a former 15th round draft choice of the Royals last summer. It's a big kid. See if they try to go downstairs with him again. Breaking ball pulled fair down the third baseline and towards the corner. 
Zaragoza will go to third and stay there as the throw comes in. But the Sooners have the tying runs in scoring position. Walla with his fourth double of the year. Some sort of an off-speed pitch. Like a little slider or cutter that just stayed up in the zone. And Walla was able to just keep it fair down that third baseline. And the Sooners now have runners at second, third. First time a runner at third base here today. Well, this is what we talked about just a moment ago. As good as Wicks has been and as much confidence as K-State may have in the game to this point, it's still only a two-run game. If you're Oklahoma, you feel like you have the upper hand if you can get Wicks out of the game and get to the bullpen. Yeah, that's... Buck went out there to settle him down, get him refocused. We got Treadway at the plate. A very good bunter, so perhaps Oklahoma thinking squeeze play here. K-State may have to be on their toes. Wicks, after the conversation, will be allowed to try and get out of this. Nobody out. Two runners in scoring position to tie the game for Oklahoma. Looking to break up this shutout against Jordan Wicks. Cats are in at the corner, deep up the middle. We'll concede the run for an out. And a foul ball by Treadaway. And after a fastball, Treadaway had an infield single on a chopper left side of the diamond his last time up for his third hit in this series. Three for eight. Last batter of the third time through the order for Jordan Wicks. Another good breaking pitch, but ruled down. So good pitches. They're just off the plate, just outside of the strike zone. Sooners have been laying off of them rather than swinging at them. Line towards right. Kakaska's got a plan on a hop. Oklahoma has halved the lead. And the bottom of the order does it again for the Sooners. Fastball outside part of the plate. Treadaway did a great job just... Stayed square with it, lined it to right field. Ball was back up in the zone again. He's been, Jordan's been up a little bit more here the last couple innings. Sooners have taken advantage of it. And here comes Pete Hughes, the head coach of the Wildcats, at the top of the order due up, and that will be it for Jordan Wiggs. So the freshman pitches into the eighth inning. But with runners at the corners, the tying run in at third base, Pete Hughes will go to the bullpen, and the Wildcats will make a pitching change. Mitch Subrat coming in. I'll tell you about Mitch Subrat when we return. Jordan Wicks, Kansas State's freshman starter, had a shutout going to start the eighth inning, but Oklahoma threatening. He has been removed from the game, but here is the Performance from Wicks today, who struck out five, only allowed six hits, the one run, and only walked one. It was in this frame. Wicks, again, special Mike Clark for K-State. Now the bullpen's got to pick him up. Well, he did his job. He, here we are in the eighth inning, only giving up one run. He mixed his pitches well, you know, through strikes. Walk in the top of the eighth. That's the only run that Oklahoma scored so far. Start getting the ball up in the zone just a little bit, but my gosh, he gave Kansas State everything that they needed. Knew it was going to be a low-scoring ball game, and he went out there and, and gave Kansas State a great, great seven innings. 112 pitches for Wicks in seven frames, and now Mitch Zubrot takes over. Second appearance of the series. Zubrot threw the Friday game, went two-thirds of an inning, came in with the bases loaded. Unfortunately for him, Gave up a couple of hits, and all three runners he inherited would come around and score, while his line ended up with a zero. Eric Torres ended up with a couple of runs on his final ledger. There are the numbers on the season for Zubrod, who still ranks among the Big 12's best when it comes to closers. Four saves, 
1.33 ERA, which leads the team 26 strikeouts in 20 and a third innings. Muniz will be the first to face Zubrat. And he'll swing and miss at the slider, which is one of Zubrat's best pitches for strike one. Muniz singled off of the bullpen in the game yesterday. Did not face Zubrat in the game on Friday. In fact, both of Muni's hits in this series have come against K-State's bullpen. And a ground ball through the left side here. He does it again and ties the game. It's another slider. This time got a little bit too much of the plate. And Mooney's was able to pull it past Thompson at third base, who was in in case of the bunt. And so Oklahoma with first and second. Probably a pretty good situation for a sacrifice bunt in this situation. Still nobody out. The chance for the big inning for Oklahoma. And Lindsley is already squared. And gets the bunt down, third base side. Thompson fields, throws, and gets the runner. But the runners advance that were on base. So sacrifice for Lindsley is the first out. And now the lead run at third base. And an insurance run in scoring position for Briley Ware. Now the catch is going to put him on. Intentional walk for Ware. Set the double play up. And now Justin Mitchell against Zubrat. Now Mitchell faced Zubrat with the bases loaded, and he'll be called back. So he won't get a chance to repeat what he did the first time, which was single on a ball similar to that we just saw from Muniz, punching it through the left side. Mitchell will be called back and a left-handed pinch hitter. Vujovic has not played in this series. Jordan Vujovic is a redshirt sophomore from California, transferred from Delta College. He has played in the majority of the games this year, but scuffling here as of late, just eight for his last 43 with 12 strikeouts in 16 games. He will pinch hit, though, against Zubrat. First pitch to him is low for ball one. Mitch trying to get a ground ball at an infielder. Turn the double play. Trying to get out of this inning. Vujovic is looking to get a fly ball someplace to get the run home. Bouncing ball into home plate. Ceballos at least knocked it down enough to keep it near the dish. But now 2-0. Fastball just... Spiked it right in front of home plate. Ceballos did a great job blocking it. Keep it in around home plate. Vujovic is 0 for 2 as a pinch hitter this season. Taking a strike. It looked like he was taken all the way. 2 and 1. Wildcat Faithful trying to help out Zubrat. Another one buried. Three and one. Well, nowhere to put him. Another one out of the zone. I'm going to guess he's not going to have the take sign here because I think everybody in the ballpark knows it's going to be a fastball. Ball four. And Oklahoma takes the lead on a bases loaded walk on the pinch hit by Vujovic. And it's 3-2 suitors. Still just one out. Wildcats have to refocus. Still need double play. Get out of the inning and get the bats up to the plate again. Hardman one for three. He takes strike one. That'll finish the line for Wicks. Seven innings, three runs, a walk and five strikeouts. 
For a guy that had a shutout going into the eighth, tough line to finish with, but the bullpen let him down. And Kane State will have to play some come from behind baseball again. Slider gets Hardman out in front, 0-2. That's the nine, one, and two hitters due up for K-State in the bottom of the eighth. Burroughs, Thompson, Brennan, Hughes, if anybody gets on. Clay Van Hook calling Hardman over. Give him a word or two of encouragement against Zubrot. These are your character times right now, whether it be the pitcher or infield. Had a rough inning, had a big lightning bolt hit here in the eighth inning. Cats need to refocus. Get out of this inning. And a slider that's fouled away. That one stayed up a little bit too much. Got no two count. You have to have faith in your catcher that can bury a slider there in front of home plate, get a swing and miss. He'll be able to block it. does great job it's a good pitch that's what that's what you want to do oh two. there's no way he can get a bat on that thing if you can get him to get a swing on that get that second out get a little moment momentum back with the wildcats hardman struck out against Subrat in the game on friday Subrat or hardman's numbers with the bases loaded this year and that includes that strikeout in the ball game on friday night Ground ball here, weekly to second. Passado will flip to Hughes, covering the throw back to first is in time, a double play, and that ends the inning. So Zublat gets the double play, ground ball he wanted, and the Cats avoid further damage. Well, some defensive changes for Oklahoma as we head to the bottom of the eighth after the pinch hitter and Mylon Walla, who had arguably the biggest hit of the game, the double, just inside the line down the left side in that three-run eighth. He will stay in the game and take over in center field. And Tanner Treadway will move to right field here in the eighth. And the Wildcats will try to come from behind down 3-2. There's a look at Treadway now in right field. Harlan out of the game. Well, the hard throwing Matthews, who came in and got a 1 2 3 7. 94 to 95 with the fastball. Occasionally 97 for Matthews. Big time gas against Burroughs, Thompson, and Brennan here in the eighth. Cats just need one to tie this thing up. Strike one. Burroughs is single on a bunt and struck out. His first look at Matthews. Bullpen today for Oklahoma has been exactly what they needed. And any chance of a comeback, you need your bullpen to step up, and that's the case for Oklahoma today. They kept throwing up zeros. Biding their time until Wicks finally faltered in the eighth, and then the bullpen was Zubrot unable to keep Oklahoma off the scoreboard. Two and one to Burroughs. He's doing exactly what he needs to do. Take pitches. Look for a mistake right here. He's got that drag bun if he wants it. Push it by the, the mound if he wants it. Pretty good play also. Fastball in on his hands, a little late. Tough pitch. 94 mile an hour, that's, that's a toughie there. Oh. 
overthrown. Three and two. Jason Ruffcorn and Legend Smith are still warming in the bullpen behind Matthews, so there are some big-time weapons out on the pen for the Sooners. Should Matthews falter. 3-2, hit on one hop towards second. McKenna on the run will throw out Burroughs. One out in the eighth. Cats back to the top of the order now. Thompson hitless today. Sooners, if anything, have done a good job of limiting Cam Thompson's ability to hurt them. He has hit in eight straight and hit over 400 in that time with four homers. After the first pitch, sends a high fly ball to the left. The wind is pushing it towards the wall. It is gone! He has done it again! Cam Thompson has tied it in the bottom of the eighth! An oppo check for Thompson! He got a fastball up out over the plate and went with it. Got it up in the air, and the wind is carrying the ball in that direction. And you can see Muniz, he thought he had a play initially and then just ran back to the wall, and that sailed under the bullpen. And the Cats answer, big home run here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Look at Thompson, the emotion going around the bases from the junior leader, now Will Brennan, in the first pitch outside ball one. Thompson had three career home runs prior to the series against Texas. He has now hit five in his last nine games. Speed pitch by Matthews in for a strike. One and one to Will Brunnen. And yet again, the eighth, the seventh, eighth, ninth innings for K-State. They have tied the game and grabbed momentum back. Thompson smokes one, but McKenna had him play. Drops the baseball initially, but still has time to make the play. Two outs. Hit the ball right on the nose, just to the right of second baseman. Was able to recover, make the out at first base. Cats have two outs. It's been a, quite a ball game. Yes, it has. Just what we thought. Cats have shown a lot of character. Oklahoma showed it in the top of the eighth. Cats come back in the bottom of the eighth. After three in the top of the inning, the Wildcats have scored one in the bottom of the frame. And who knows what we'll get the rest of this way. Scoreboard almost even up. Three runs, seven hits for both. Thomas Hughes hitless today. And he's ahead 2-0. and oh. And you have Kakaska on deck. That's only the second home run allowed this year by Zach Matthews. He was taking, so showed a bunt. Trying to throw off Oklahoma. Trying to get Kikoska up there from the left side. Got a little more pop also. Well, back by Hughes. And Oklahoma, a strike away from ending the eighth, going to the ninth, all tied. Well, we mentioned before that this is not a sellout crowd today after two sellouts the last two days. A little chillier weather today, rain expected in the forecast, thankfully, for later. But what crowd there is has been vocal and into the game. Full count. Good take. The slider away. The 
the former Sooner Thomas Hughes, who's had three hits this series. Pokes one out to right field, shallow, but coming in is the right fielder Treadway, and he'll make the grab for the final out. But Cam Thompson, a sudden power surge continues, flies one out the opposite way for his eighth career home run in fifth this season. Boy, what a last two weeks it has been for Cam Thompson. Two and a half weeks, really. Five home runs in his last eight games. And a solo shot here in the bottom of the eighth inning a moment ago has tied this game in three. And after the Wildcats could have been deflated, after seeing three go up on the board against their ace, Jordan Wicks, and the bullpen and Mitch Zubrot. Thompson grabs it all back for K-State. Now, can they get a zero and send this thing to the bottom of the ninth with a chance to walk it off in a series finale for the second straight home weekend? Connor McKenna, Brandon Zaragoza, and Walla all do up for the Sooners in the ninth. And Zubrat, with a clean inning, will start behind 1-0. McKenna has gone hitless today, a couple of flyouts and a strikeout. After three hits in two days against K-State. One and one to count. Momentum's in the Wildcat dugout right now. It's up to Mitch. Come out here, make good pitches. Cats play sound defense behind him and get that momentum back in the dugout, swinging a bat. Breaking ball is hit in the air to right, not well struck. Passano will make the grab out number one of the ninth. Here comes the trouble part of the order for Kansas State. Uh, the bottom of the order has been doing a lot of the damage for Oklahoma. Zaragoza has two hits, a walk, and a run scored. He walked the lead off the eighth in what had been a game where nothing had gone right for Oklahoma offensively in seven innings against Jordan Wicks. Milan Wallace at bat on deck, perhaps the most important of the game. First pitch a strike to Zaragoza. He had a pinch hit double that hugged the line down the left line and put runners at second and third, and suddenly Oklahoma was off and running. One and one to Zaragoza, who had a sacrifice fly against Zubrod in the game back on Friday. And a fly ball to center. It's this one in the year, but foul. Four hits in the series for Zaragoza now. Four for nine. He's also walked twice. Hanging slider off the end of the bat. Thompson will take care of it in foul ground. Mitch usually gets ground balls, but back-to-back pop-ups here in the top of the ninth. Just need outs if you're K-State. Bottom of the ninth will be Kakaska, Ceballos, and Phillips. Will the Sooners stick with Matthews, or will Ruffcorn, the closer, be coming in? This pitch to Walla is a strike. Mylon Walla at a 1-2 pitch against Jordan Wicks. Able to hug one down the line that, again, was fair by mere inches. And that is the difference right now for Oklahoma. And his first pinch hit appearance of the season, no less. The true freshman came up with that big hit. Mitch has done a good job here at this at-bat, keeping the ball down in the zone. Fastballs and sliders. One, two, struck him out. Well, 
Subrat gets a 1-2-3 ninth, and the Cats a chance to walk off another Big 12 opponent. All tied up in three, headed to the bottom of the ninth in the rubber game between K-State and Oklahoma. It's been a highly charged series with emotions running hot on both sides. A lot of intensity for this series. Former Oklahoma coach Pete Hughes going against his former team. A lot of guys that he recruited and that played for him. And the Wildcats kind of with that chip on their shoulder. Unanimous pick last in the Big 12. And with a win, they could be in tie for fifth with this Sooner team. Jason Ruffcore, the Texas A&M transfer from Cedar Park, Texas, sidearming Fireballer will come in 91 to 95 with an arm angle that's down a little lower, and he takes over on the mound. It was a big coup for Oklahoma when they lost Braden Fink, who had been their ace out of the pen the last couple of years. When Fink went down with an injury right early in the season, right before the season started, Ruffcorn was magically granted a waiver to be eligible for Oklahoma from Texas A&M to be eligible. And all of a sudden, here comes Ruffcorn, and all he's done is rack up 10 saves in 24 appearances, a 1.86 ERA. And he will face Kakaska, Ceballos, and Phillips here in the ninth inning. First pitch, fastball, a strike. Now, left-handers have given Ruffcorn a bit of trouble this year. He's seen left-handers hit him to the tune of 316. Roddy's just 136. And two left-handers to face him in the ninth. Kakaska takes one on his shoe tops. One for two day for Zach Kakaska. Three hits in the series, including a home run. Zach wants to look for a pitch up a little bit. Ruffcorn's got a good sinker, trying to keep it down. Well, Zach wanted a trigger on that pitch. It was down, but he did not go around, says third base umpire Matt Anderson. The numbers on Kakaska, who has been even better in this ballpark. He has really played well in the Little Apple, hitting 370 and slugging well over 600. A little nice backup to that pitch by Ruffcorn, two and two. He's got good movement away from the left-handed batter with his fastball, going low three-quarter arm slot. Two, two, just underneath his hands. That is a great pitch from Ruffcorn and perhaps a missed strike call by the home plate umpire, Bill McGuire. He didn't give the inside corner on the pitch, two pitches before either. I thought it was virtually in the same spot. You can see Skip Johnson at the background there shaking his head. He can't believe it. Zach can't give up on that pitch that is inside because of the tail, the movement of that fastball. Foul ball right side. Well, that pitch was outer half. Does Ruffcorn come back in? That's where it would appear you'd want to attack Kakaska, who again strides towards the plate the way that he does. They do, and Kakaska ropes it into right field for a base hit. They wanted that fastball inside. The ref corn left it out over the middle of the plate. Kakaska did a good job, short stroke. Just pulled it into right field for the base hit. Lead off batter on. See if the Wildcats bunt here. They also have a good base runner in Kakaska. Good steal. He has a stolen base today. Ceballos showing bunt, takes strike one. Ceballos has one sacrifice this year. Picked up his 30th RBI of the season with a base hit in the fourth. Get 
gets jammed and fouls it off. So not bunting there. Now it's 0-2. Well, he had a good pitch to hit right there. Just missed it. Fouled it straight back. Fastball up in the zone. Love to have that one back. Might see Oklahoma pitch out here or try to do something to upset the running game. Outside corner again. Not very gracious today. A lot of Wildcat fans standing here in this bottom of the ninth. Winning run at first. It was last Saturday against TCU that the Wildcats came back from a 6-1 deficit to take a 10-7 lead into the ninth, only see that evaporate, and then at 10-10, won it in walk-off fashion in the bottom of the ninth. On a walk-off squeeze play. Trying to do it in back-to-back -back weekends and win their third straight Big 12 series. Not a bad pitch to run on, maybe. You may see a slider here, which is a good pitch to, to steal on. Ceballos loops it over the shortstop's head and on a one-two pitch has his second hit of the game. And it was a breaking pitch, but it stayed up in the zone. And Ceballos did a great job. This pitch is breaking away and just got enough of it to pull it over the shortstop's head. Wasn't a pretty swing, but boy, was it successful. Quite a game for Ceballos. Two hits today for Ceballos. Threw out a runner at second. And now the freshman, Dylan Phillips. Likely will be bunting. The Wildcats are thinking about pinch runner over at first base. They're going to get a little time to think that over. Skip Johnson, head coach for Oklahoma, who serves as the pitching coach, will head out to the mound to talk with his entire infield. And this likely to discuss all of the options because K-State has shown the last two days that they will do virtually anything offensively. So if you're Oklahoma, you have to be worried about bunt coverage. you got to be worried about Kais trying to score from second on a bunt. I mean, all of it is in play right now for K-State, especially with the speed of Kakaska. And I think we might have a pinch hitter here for Dylan Phillips. Rainer Osmus has come out of K-State's dugout. So if you are thinking about it, that would lend you to think there's going to be a bunt. That's exactly. He's laid down some big bunts last weekend, important pressure pack bunts. Now, Ruff Corn's going to be one to be tough to bunt off of because of his movement and how hard he throws. Phillips will end the day 0 for 3, and now Rainer Osmus, the senior, will pinch hit. And normally you would not remove a left-handed bat for a right-handed bat against a righty on the mound. But again, two things. One, Osmus, one of the best bunters on the team. But two, Pete Hughes said it before the Texas series. He said, Brian, we're an unconventional team. we got to start thinking unconventionally and going against some of the traditions of baseball. That's when K-State shook up their lineup, put Wicks on a Sunday, Hughes in the number three spot, and they have taken off since that point. It was Osmus who won the game against TCU with a squeeze play last Saturday, already squaring here against Ruffcorn. And the bunt nearly hit him. That's too bad he couldn't get the bat out of the way because that ball would have hit him. Again, that movement into the right-handed hitter makes it very tough to lay a bunt down, to deaden a bunt on you know, just that three-quarter arm slot. You're probably going to see a fastball because you don't want to bury a breaking pitch and let the runners advance on their own. So, 
Osmus calling time. Native of Texas is Osmus. Went to Tulane to start his career, then Chandler Gilbert Community College. Now in his second and final year with K-State. Squares early again. And the pitch down. Nobody out of the ninth. K-State with a chance here to try to get the runners in scoring position. And you have Oklahoma native Caleb Little Jim on deck. The game would be placed in his hands if Osmus can get the job done. First baseman is charging hard, so anything hard his direction, they're probably going to go to third base with. Ospis bunts to the pitcher, bobbled a moment, but Ruffcorn makes the play to third. Well, Ospis got the bunt down, but he got it too close to the pitcher, and Ruffcorn, tremendous job of spinning and throwing to third base. Yeah, it was needed to get by the pitcher. Ruffcorn was going hard that direction. <laughs> And made a really nice play for Oklahoma to get the lead runner at third base. And now K-State will call one of their offensive conferences. And you've got a decision to make here. You've got Ceballos at second. Now K-State is not deep at catcher. You have Mason Cruz. That's it. Maybe Maxson as a backup catcher. Do you run for Ceballos at second base? with potentially the winning run. I mean, if you score, it doesn't matter, right? Right. But if he nope. doesn't, then it does matter. You lose a big bat in your lineup the rest of the game. It's kind of been the philosophy with Pete, go for the win. Do whatever you have to do in order to get the win. That's Mason Cruz right there. So he was out in the bullpen. And he will take over for Ceballos out at second base, the freshman Backup catcher. Uh, Ceballos finishes the day two for four. And it's up to Little Jim. One for three day for Little Jim, but his biggest contribution to the series was his sixth and a third of one run baseball yesterday to help the Wildcats have a chance today to win the series. Well, the Oklahoma native a chance to be the hero for the second straight day. And a first pitch high for ball one. Little Jim also a guy that can drop down a bunt. He has three sacrifice bunts this season, but it's not necessarily a strength in his first full year of playing in the field every day or at the plate every day. You see the numbers he has with runners in scoring position. He's been a pretty clutch RBI guy for the Wildcats. But takes two upstairs to begin his at bat. 16 of Little Jim's 25 RBIs have come with two outs. So that speaks to somewhat of him rising to the occasion. I know there aren't two outs right now, but it's kind of that hidden number that shows you perhaps the inclination of a young man to come up when they catch or a team needs it most. What does Ruffcorn deliver here at 2-0? and oh? A strike. Closer for the Sooners. Trying to get this game to extra innings. Ruffcorn's had success with a fastball. He hasn't really got any of his other pitches in the zone yet. So little Jim can look for a fastball. Got jammed and he fouled it off. I'm not sure sure that would have been a strike with the movement of the pitch. A lot of an experience here at the bottom of K-State's order. Phillips, who was at the point that pinch hit for, but Little Jim Passano Burroughs really on their first years of playing extensively in the field and at the plate for K-State. 
Well, that might be a strength, though, too. They may not know how big a moment this is. <laughs> you would hope that's the case. A 2-2 from Roughcorn. Foul back. Just missed, had a good cut. Got a fastball up in the zone. Little Axe, Oklahoma, Christian Heritage High School, where he was the 2A player of the year. Little Jim awaits another 2 2. Jammed out towards second, a little blooper. One foot on the bag, that's the only play for Zaragoza. Runners at the corners. That almost snuck through, but. Really got sawed off. And shortstop Zaragoza Goza did a great job just getting the one out. Now we'll see what the Cats do with the first and third situation. We'll have another pinch hitter. Jeffrey Bogus will pinch hit for Jackson Passano. Passano was one for three in his time, had a tremendous bunt single back in the third. So with Bogus hitting, that would probably take the bunt out of play here, at least on paper. Bogus, a true freshman from Corpus Christi, Texas, does not had a bunt this season. Little Jim's going to get a big lead. They're not holding him on, probably going to give him second base. He'll take it. Bogus swings through a fastball. Now, Little Jim's run, unimportant. If the one from third comes in, the game is over. If Ruffcorn gets two more strikes, we're going extra innings. It would be the first extra innings games of the season for K-State. Pitch well out of the zone, and Bogus waved at it. Sometimes you try to do too much when you're up there in these situations. Probably going to see Heat away also continued. Not going to throw the breaking pitch for fear that may get by the catcher. May be a wild pitch, so... Out away, Bogus does well to stay alive. That was a good pitch. That was a hitter hitter's pitch right there. Ruffcorn got away with one. Sooners will have the nine one two hitters due up in the tenth if they can get there. Ruffcorn has had a battle through this ninth inning. King State had their first two men on. But now two outs, runners second and third. The winning run 90 feet away for Bogus, the freshman. <laughs> Lindsley does well to keep that one near the plate. There is not a lot of foul ground here at home plate. And as hard as Ruffcorn throws, a wild pitch does not necessarily guarantee a run in. Mason Cruz will have to be very astute at third as to where the ball goes if Ruffcorns would acclimate with a wild pitch. In the air, shallow left, Zaragoza is out. He'll make the grab, and we are going extra innings in Manhattan. For the first time this season, extra innings for K-State. All tied at three as we go to the 10th inning. Extra innings for the first time this season for Kansas State. They were three and two in extra inning games a season ago. Oklahoma 0 oh and two in extra inning games this season. So both teams looking for their first extra innings win of the year. Mitch Zubrot back out to work for K-State. 
couple of defensive changes for the Wildcats after their moves the last inning. Rainer Osmus will stay in the game and take over at first base for the Wildcats. Mason Cruz will now be behind the plate. And Caleb Little Jim will be out at second base. There's a look at Cruz as the Cats make the defensive changes necessary after all of the pinch hitters and pinch runners that were used in the top half of this inning. However, with Little Jim coming in from the DH spot, that likely means that K-State has lost their designated hitter for the rest of this bowl game. We'll see how that plays out in the top of the or the bottom of the tenth. Treadaway, Muniz, and Lindsley do up in the tenth inning for Oklahoma. And the first pitch is low for ball one. Treadaway is two for three. RBI single in that three run eighth. That was the last batter that George, uh, Jordan Wicks saw before he departed. And a ground ball will get through the left side here to start in the 10th. A three-hit game from number nine hitter Tanner Treadaway. And Mitch got behind 1-0, and came back with a fastball up in the zone. He was able to pull it through the hole. See if the Sooners get into their bunning game here. Muniz single to left to drive in a run off of Zubrat to lead off the eighth. He'll bunt and take a strike. One for four is Muniz. Three for 13 in the series, but a couple of RBIs. And as we said earlier, all three hits for him have come in the later innings of each game. He has hit off the bullpen of K-State. Slider crossed him up and may have crossed up the umpire. One and one. Well, it's the middle of the plate. and Don't let him squat down. That's one of the things. It may look like it's high there, but that's not his stance. That's He's, he's taking about six inches down in his bunt foundation. Throw the first runner is back. Strike zone's established from his regular stance. Thompson way in at third. The bunt first base side. The ball will go foul. It's a good job. Good play by Rayner. Osmus letting that go foul instead of being too aggressive. At one and two count. See if they keep the bunt on. Two strikes. Good pickup by Osmus and a little throw from Zubrat just into the game is Rayner. Can play anywhere in the infield. Hanging slider crushed foul. And you can see that. Coming up, that looked like a mistake pitch from Zubrat. And he wants that pitch down in the zone where you get a ground ball, possible double play. We've got a backup catcher, a relief pitcher who's not necessarily quick to the plate. If the Sooners might want to do a little run in here at some point. Another slider hung, and it's pounded down the left field line. Out of here, a home run from Muniz, and Oklahoma leads 5-3. to three. A 
like you said, hanging slider, and he was sitting on it. And he put a charge into it. Dylan signed there in left field. Zubrod has to refocus now. Muniz has crushed the K-State bullpen. He is four for six against the Wildcat bullpen, hitless against K-State starting pitching over three days. You go K-State went from having the winning run at second base with nobody out in the bottom of the ninth and at third with one out. Or two outs, I should say, to now down two in the tenth. And Zubrat behind 2-0 to Lindsley. It's tough to do after you give up a two-run shot there in the extra innings, but got to refocus. Got to get right back into that zone. You climb back, keep it at a two-run deficit for your bats to get back up there. Cats will have 9-1-2 up in the 10th inning. Talked about how emotionally charged this series was, and you have seen it here on just the last few frames. The ping ponging of emotion back and forth between these two teams, the momentum. And a walk by Zubrat. And Pete Hughes out to the mound. This may be it for Zubra here in the 10th. And it is. Andrew Stratman takes over on the mound for Kansas State. Sophomore from the Salina area, Salina Central High School, 2-0 with a 5.3 ERA. He becomes the third pitcher for K-State. He'll take over for Mitch Zubrot, who gave up a two-run homer in this inning to have K-State fall behind 5-3. There are the numbers on Stratman, 15 strikeouts in 18 and two-thirds. Right-hander at 88-92 to 92 with a fastball, slider cutter. The repertoire for Stratman. He'll take over trying to turn around what's been kind of a rough last few games for him. He's allowed six runs in his last three outings. There's Pete Hughes, the head coach of the Wildcats. Boy, sometimes as a coach you make all these moves and they pay off as they did yesterday for K-State. The moves today just didn't quite come through. The Wildcats with some moving around of the chess pieces at the plate and on the base pass in the ninth. Couldn't get those first two base runners home. All of a sudden you go from that thinking that K-State was well in position to win the game to now down to here in the 10th trying to stop the bleeding. Nobody out. Bradley Ware at the plate and have a chance to come back again in the bottom of the 10th. All you can do as a coach is put your players in a position to win the ball game and that's what happened right there in the ninth inning. Cats were in a position to win the ball game, just couldn't get that big base hit in order to to win the ball game and take the lead. Briley Ware, 0 for 3. He has walked. That was an intentional walk issued by the Cats in the 8th when the Sooners scored 3. Well, they've played five runs in the last three innings. Three in the 8th, two here in the 10th. They had nothing doing through seven innings against Jordan Wicks. They finally got a couple of runners to start in the eighth inning. Touched, touched him up for a run. Cats went to the bullpen to Mitch Zubrot, who unfortunately could not hold the lead. 
Subrat had a 1 2 3 ninth, but ran into problems in the 10th. Ware fouls off a pitch from Stratman. As Mike mentioned, in the bottom of the 10th, K State will have their 9 1 and 2 hitters up Burroughs, Thompson, Brennan. If anybody gets on, Hughes. And they'll need at least two. Runner bricks. It is a strike to wear, but the throw by Cruz not in time. Lindsley steals second. Ware strikes out. Well, you figured at some point Oklahoma was going to test uh, Cruz, backup catcher. You also have Mitch, who, Zubrod, who does take a little bit longer to get the ball to home plate. So, runner in scoring position. So Vujovic, who had a pinch hit walk with the bases loaded to drive in a run in the eighth, will swing for against Stratman, and he'll shoot one down the left field line. That is going to be a fair ball, and one hop its way over out of play, and that stolen base becomes pretty big because that now is another run across for Oklahoma. He took a fast ball, drove it the opposite way. You can really see the winds picked up here the last couple innings. And that was curving away from left fielder and uh, bounced over the wall. Cats had probably going to be a double whether it hits the wall or not, so that's not important. So still have a runner on second base and only one out. Three runs to the line of Zubrat in his two innings. Runner at second, one out for Hardman, the first baseman who hit into an inning-ending double play in the eighth. Ten hits on the board for Oklahoma for the second time in three games. Hardman, after the first pitch, fouls it off. One and one. If Oklahoma wins this game, they would get to 8-7 and seven in the league. 30 wins on the year. They'd be the first team to get there to 30 wins. Actually, the second. Baylor won today. 12-1 over TCU to sweep that series. So the Bears now at 30-12 and 12-5 and 12 and in the conference are in first place. Oklahoma could join them with a 30-win campaign if they win today they would get to eight and seven and be two games back in the conference standings of the leaders Texas won today 10-2 over West Virginia so the Longhorns get their sixth conference win A loss, sorry, yes, a loss for K-State would drop them to 6-9 and nine and put them alone in 7th. Good cut fastball. Tried the breaking pitch, didn't get the call, came back with a cut fastball. Want to make a quality pitch here. Lined foul onto the patio. Came back inside with a fastball. <laughs> Defense has to stay awake right now. Been a long inning. 
May need to make a big play here. Help the Cats get out. Breaking ball down. The runner's going to break for third and be there without a throw. Wild pitch by Stratman has another insurance run at third base. Cruz did all he could with that pitch. Way outside. Centered it up. Hit on his arm a little bit. Bounced away, but... Boyevich had big jump there at second base. Was able to get to third. He'll strike out. Good comeback by Stratman. Two outs. Big time pitch. Came with the slider outside part of the plate. Got the swing and miss. Two outs. Connor McKenna. 0 for 4 today. Strike one on a high breaking pitch that that has not been given a strike much of the game. Almost at the head of McKenna. One and one. When he stuck his head down, he almost <laughs> put it right where the pitch was. Breaking two, so. <laughs> Fastball out of the zone. Again. Don't need any base, any more base runners. Need a big pitch right here. Get the cats in the dugout. Out towards left and foul. Breaking pitch got out in front of it. Strike two. Need to get the pitch down in the zone now. Struck out. Stratman strikes out the side, but does give up an RBI double. That increases the lead to three. Oklahoma, Unis, a two-run shot. Give them the lead. A three-run advantage to the bottom of the tenth. Kansas State down three, headed to the bottom of the 10th. They'll need some big time Toyton family magic if they're to come back and win this game. Jason Ruffcourt, closer for the Aggies, for Texas A&M for a couple of years, now closing for the Sooners. Certainly pitched through an interesting ninth inning, gave up back-to-back -back base hits to open up the ninth and navigated through eventually what was second and third with two outs by not allowing the game-winning runs. And now he'll work in the 10th and try and keep K-State from scoring three. Burroughs, Thompson, Brennan, three left-handers due up to face him here in the 10th inning. K-State's first extra inning game of the season, third for Oklahoma. They've lost both this year. Burroughs, one for three in his second straight start. Two for seven in the series against the Sooners. And ahead 2-0. and oh. Take a strike here. See if he can coax a walk on four pitches. 
Don't square around. Don't do anything. Just stay in there just like you have been. He hasn't been able to find home plate yet. Don't give him a target closer to the catcher's mitt. It's a good take. Good baseball right there. Despite Ruffcorn's great success this year, 1.86 ERA, Oklahoma hedging no bets. They have two relievers, a lefty and a righty, warming behind him. Two and two. Ball. Good job. Probably a ball, but with two strikes, you don't want to take that chance. Did a nice job following it off. Full count. That is the third straight at bat that Blake Burrows has worked a full count. Further endearing himself, I would believe, to the coaching staff at K-State. No question. In the lineup due to an injury, and he's earning more playing time. But he'll strike out on a pitch that might have been ball four. That'll bring up Cam Thompson. Unfortunately, not more runners on because the last time up, he was able to tie the game with one swing of the bat his fifth home run here in the last eight games. Unfortunately for him, he can't tie it up with one swing of the bat right now. Still, nine-game hitting streak for Thompson. The five homers in that stretch, 11 runs scored. The run scored is the important thing. That's what the Cats need right now. Base runners. Get a couple of people on here, top of the order. Anything can happen. We've cats have proven that the last couple weeks, three weeks. Trying to go the other way again down to the corner, but he'll have it only go foul. Great approach. The wind blowing the way it is right now. Little topper back to rough corn. Two outs in the tenth. And Will Brennan, the last hope for the Wildcats. Will Brennan, one for four. Good take. Looking for one pitch in one spot, no matter if you hit a home run or not. You need two other people to score with you, so get on base. Fly ball that'll be foul down the left field line. Muniz giving it quite a bit of a look just outside of his reach. Ended up not being that far from the foul pole. No, it did not. Credit to Muniz, who did not give up on it. And Oklahoma now a strike away from getting their first extra innings win of the season. 
winning the series in Manhattan. To shorten up a little bit. Well, it's tough to strike out. Brennan golfs one foul. Staying alive. Two, waxed up the middle off the bit of Zera, goes into center field. Great job, fastball, took it right up the middle. <laughs> Had enough on it this time, was able to get through. Time to advance the, the line, I mean, that's, Cats down to their last out, but Oklahoma has to get that last out, has to earn it. See if Thomas can keep it going also. The former Sooner, hitless today, but a good series against his former team. He'll take strike one. They'll see it nothing as poetic if they were able to finish the game against Hughes. Of course, Thomas would see the opposite if he was able to continue the game and give K-State a chance. They were holding Brennan at first. Now the Sooners will... Pull Hardman off the bag. Will will take second. And the Wildcats down to their final strike again. Good slider right there by Ruffcorn. outside. Kakaska would be next. If Hughes could get on, he'd bring the tying run to the plate. Ball backhanded by McKenna. His throw to first in time, and Oklahoma has won their sixth straight series against K State. Time to name our K State Global Campus Player of the Game, and it's that young man, Diego Muniz, who hits his second homer of the season. A two run shot off of Mitch Subron on the top of the 10th, part of a three run 10th inning. And it gives Kansas State a loss at home. An extra frames. The Sooners score three in the seventh, three, or I should say three in the eighth, and three in the tenth, and go on to win this game six to three. Earn a degree from Kansas State no matter where you live. K-State Global Campus, expanding campus to you. Diego Muniz, our player of the game. Two teams exchanging pleasantries out on the diamond. The Wildcats drop a home series to Oklahoma, but now have to refocus. They got one more home game this week with Wichita State, and then back out on the road, and they're going to the conference leader in the Baylor Bears next weekend.